Hi, you're, you're watching, watching YWAM Perth, Perth News. News. God's doing amazing things in the nations. This week we're going to look at oral Bible translation, the School of Journalism, and YWAM Perth worship. Here at YWAM Perth, we have so many opportunities to worship. Monday mornings, Wednesday school worship, Friday nights, and a whole afternoon on Thursday. Let's check it out. I think worship, it brings us together in unity as one group. You know, when we're all singing one song together, we're all unified. When we're, you know, like all shifting our focus together on God, I think it's a place where God will speak often. Um, it's often a tool for breakthrough in intercession. I think that just that really brings strength and unity. The worthiness of God and um, celebration of who God is, it's always been a huge value um, to actually give God the praise and the honor uh, that he's actually due. Um, what he's going to do in the nations, what he's already done in the nations. Like when we respond to God and just like that praise and you are this, you are that, like we're naturally gonna be refreshed and encouraged and drawn towards each other as we come together. And then like we're often like praying for each other or praying for the nations together and so I think, um, yeah, the, the corporate is the key for us as well in Perth. Open worship, Yes, it does look different from our other corporate worship times, but the heart behind it is just to have a facilitated time where it's called open worship, so people are invited, where there's a space of availability where we can actually just come with our free will, just set aside um, the things that we're doing in the office that day or whatever, and just to actually come and look at Jesus. It's an opportunity for us to give to God um, in expressive ways. You'll see people um, making art. You'll still pe see people asking God for words for other people. It's a different kind of atmosphere than what we usually do, but the heart behind it um, is actually to, to set aside what we're doing for a moment, even if it's just for 20 minutes, out of our free will. Okay, this isn't a normal scheduled time, but I'm just gonna get up out of my chair and I'm gonna go in here. I'm gonna give to the Lord, whatever that looks like. <laughs> and so again, in God's kindness, he responds and he brings vision, he, he brings encouragement. We naturally get refreshed, but it is a time to actually to give to God. Why on birthday starting a new school, the School of Journalism, and maybe you're wondering, how does the gospel and journalism go together? Well, I staffed a few DTSs, and while I was on the outreaches, I just realized I was seeing a lot of stories and testimonies of God performing miracles and people's lives really being changed by the way that communities were being impacted and he was growing people. And I would leave that outreach and I'd write a newsletter and then realize like these stories are meant to be heard by so many more people. Mm -hmm. And I think that there's this lo missing link of what's happening in the nations and it actually being communicated to people. And so I felt like God said, try use your training to be able to equip others. And that was the beginning of a much bigger project of creating this school. I think that there's a lot that's happening in different nations and it's hard to find out what the truth is of what's going on, whether it's in a political climate or um, nations changing and just how they're aligning with God or even just the stories of an individual. And using journalism is something where people are able to go out, meet people, interview them, get the truth of the story, and then learn how to communicate that to a broader audience. Because we can write fiction and we can write books, but journalism is finding the truth about what's happening and of finding a way to inform people about what's happening. So I really want to be able to inform people of what God's doing and who He is and be able to use that to reach people who, whether they have a relationship with God or not, they're seeing Him represented in what they're reading. It's the first time this school is running at YWAM Perth. There isn't another journalism school that's running in YWAM at the moment. And so we would love to see different nations represented in this school and people being able to really use the skills to go back into whether it's their ministries or their workplaces or home life and be able to use this to, as a school for what they want to do in the future. So Kate mentioned how important it is for us to write down and record the things that God is doing. But what about people who don't know how to read or have a language that's been recorded in writing form? How do we reach them? The past two weeks, we've run an oral Bible translation seminar. And if you're like me and you don't know what that means, here's all about it. Yeah, this seminar is focusing a lot specifically on oral communicators and then how to translate the Bible for them. So 
how do you produce something that is an oral recording of the Bible? Because the majority of the population are actually oral communicators. And so for us coming at the scripture from a literacy standpoint, we can read the word for ourselves, but then you go on outreach and you pass out this Bible that everyone is working so hard to end Bible poverty with and they, they don't know how to read it. Or if they can read it, they don't know how to study it. So we're learning how do you engage communities that don't have this training and enable them to still grow in the Word of God. I've done a lot of teaching in oral cultures and had training, but this seminar even has has caused me to, to reevaluate even what I've been doing. And the understanding is the baseline of the communication that a culture already has is sufficient for sharing the gospel. So if they are storytellers, story tell the gospel. If they are musicians, share it through music. Like find the that heart spot within their culture that accesses who they are as, as a group identity. So to, to really use that for myself and the future of research is love. Find out these people, what it is that is their value system and then share the gospel with them in their value system. Personally, I'm super excited by what's been shared with us this week and what God's been doing. That's it from us. But if you are interested or know anyone who's interested in oral Bible translation or the School of Journalism, you can click the links below. And shout out to Raika. This is not a Pikachu onesie, but it's the closest thing we could get. So here you go. And here you go, Matt Brennan. You win. <laughs> Don't forget to click subscribe to follow us on Instagram and on Facebook. And we will see you next time. Bye.